Hey, you! Look at this pole! Sorry about that, apparently I need to get people's attention in the first few seconds of a video. This pole, near Shannon Corner in New Malden, is pretty unremarkable looking. It's green, it has some wires attached, big deal. Well, that green is London Transport Green, and those wires are trolleybus wires. And this is one of the few surviving relics of London's once extensive trolleybus system. The trolleybus is an easy concept to explain. Quite simply, it's an electric bus that picks up power from overhead wires, like a trolley. Or tram, as we say in the UK. Many cities have embraced the technology all over the world, yet the only ones you'll find in London are in the London Transport Museum's collection. What happened? First, a brief history. So, the first trolley bus was Werner von Siemens' invention, the Elektromoat, put into service in Berlin in 1882. Electric vehicles are nothing new. The idea spread, and in 1911, Leeds and Bradford became the first British cities to employ them. But it would be another decade before London took the plunge. In the early 20th century, London was tram turf. Trams had been an instant hit with commuters, being cheaper and more convenient than trains. From 1901, they began switching from horse traction to electric traction, and that just brought more passengers in. They even started poaching passengers from the underground. But change was on the horizon. The invention of the motor bus resulted in the trams getting a taste of their own medicine, with commuters flocking to the buses instead. It didn't help that the tram network was poorly maintained. Trams were starting to look distinctly old hat, and by the early 1920s, buses were carrying more passengers than trams. Local authorities started looking at the possibility of abandoning trams. Enter the trolley bus. Trolley buses were a kind of compromise between trams and motor buses. In fact, they were often called railless trolleys, or trackless trolleys, or even railless cars, which sounds almost like a tautology if you take it out of context. Like a lot of London's transport, American terminology was used, I'm not sure why. I do know that in America, in 1889, an experimental vehicle was built by the delightfully named Harvey D. Dibble, but I can't say whether that was an influence. So why the trolley bus? Well, unlike motor buses, trolley buses didn't produce fumes. Now, whenever I say that, someone complains that power stations do in fact produce fumes, and you may rest assured that when I find a way to travel back to 1922, I will pass your concerns on. Trolley buses were also quieter than both trams and motor buses. Unlike trams, they could pull over, they didn't stop traffic every time they paused, or require passengers to walk to the middle of the road. They could reuse some of the same power supply infrastructure as trams, but of course they didn't require rails. They could even run a very short distance without wires, thanks to a battery. There were disadvantages. Trolley buses required a turning circle, whereas trams had controls at each end and could simply reverse. Trams could pick up power from a conduit between the rails, whereas trolley buses could only pick up from overhead wires, which would need to be installed where they didn't already exist. Still, the powers that be were interested. At this time, transport was in the hands of various companies and local authorities. London County Council, West Ham Corporation, and Chiswick Urban District Council all carried out tests. The Ealing Chamber of Commerce sent a delegation to Bradford on a fact-finding mission. The Croydon Corporation went so far as to receive authorisation to convert some of their tramlines, but that didn't happen. There was also private money involved. The new Southall, Hounslow and Twickenham Railless Traction Company Limited envisaged creating totally new routes in West London, and they were far from the only commercial interest looking to get in on the ground floor. Or lower deck, if you like. Yet no one seemed ready to really go for it. It was London United Tramways who decided that if you can't beat them, join them. The first test was carried out here on Haydens Road in Wimbledon, using various borrowed vehicles. Clearly this was a success, although LUT took a while to fully commit. The tests were carried out from 1922 to 1924, but the first regular service began in 1931 between Twickenham and Teddington, and based at Fullwell Tram Depot. 
The first trolleys were these curious-looking things that were rather unfortunately nicknamed diddlers. I've heard one theory that that's because they sort of wobbled around the road. Trolley buses quickly proved their worth, being 13% cheaper to run than trams and making 25% more money overall. A royal commission in 1931 recommended getting rid of trams altogether and converting the route to trolley buses. The tram operators started getting nervous. In 1930, London County Council increased the height of their tram subway in Kingsway to enable double-deck trams to use it. And the Union Construction Company came up with the ultra-modern Feltham tram in 1931. But the fact was that the network was dilapidated and would require a full overhaul if it was to be even remotely competitive. In 1933, trams, buses and underground lines all came under the control of the London Passenger Transport Board and its operating arm, London Transport. London Transport surveyed their network and, well, it wasn't looking good for the trams. It was estimated that bringing the tram network up to scratch would cost £550,000. Converting it all to trolley buses, though, would only cost £223,000. Through various Acts of Parliament, London Transport received authorisation to carry out that conversion. Now, I'd like to address a point that might have occurred to you already. If the impetus for converting was the relative cost, why not convert it all to ordinary buses, which would surely be even cheaper? London Transport had buses. They even had a bus builder in the form of the Associated Equipment Company. Well, there was a curious legal consideration here. Trolley bus routes were considered, for legal purposes, to be tram lines, and tram lines were considered to be railways, and railways had an obligation to provide a certain number of cheap fares for workers. London Transport were worried that if they implied that any bus route was directly equivalent to a tram line, that would give them the legal obligation to provide the same cheap fares on all of their transport. This was sorted out in the long run, of course, but it was a concern at the time. But trolley buses did not have a good war. During the Second World War, London, and particularly East London, received heavy bombing during the Blitz. Trolley buses and trams alike were vulnerable to bombing. If a route was blocked by, say, a bomb crater or a fallen building, there wasn't much they could do. A trolley bus could go around a small obstacle, but a motor bus could be diverted completely. It highlighted the single biggest advantage of motor buses. Flexibility. In 1946, London Transport changed tack. There would be no more tram to trolley bus conversions. Instead, the remaining tram lines would be handed over to diesel buses. The new RT-type buses were intended as the replacement. 1952 was the peak of trolley bus operation, with hundreds of new vehicles entering service, and 254 miles of route. But even so, the trolley buses were doomed. The suburbs of London needed new buses, and the question was, diesel or trolley? The cost of maintaining the wires, the low cost of diesel, and the flexibility of motor buses led London Transport to decide in 1954 against continuing with trolley buses. Besides, they had a new toy, a custom-built vehicle known as the Route Master. In 1959, the dismantling process began. On the 9th of May 1962, the last trolley bus ran from Wimbledon to Fulwell. There was a pleasing symmetry to this last run. The first regular service departed from Fulwell Depot and the last terminated there. Present on the last day was one of the diddlers, escorting the final bus home. The age of the trolley bus was relatively short, just over 30 years, following 20 years of consideration and experimentation. Recent decades have seen a renaissance for trams, but in Britain at least, there doesn't seem to be much enthusiasm for reinstating trolley buses. There was an early version of the Cross River Tram project that would have used them, but that, and the Cross River Tram project as a whole, went nowhere. In 2012, Autocar proposed a new trolley bus for Oxford Street, but again, it's been ten years and nothing has happened. Given how popular electric vehicles have become in recent years, it's perhaps surprising that there hasn't been more interest. 
Maybe there's no place for the trolley bus in the day-to-day London commute, but a quick browse of the internet reveals that there are many who remember them fondly, or perhaps are curious about this odd little stopgap in the history of London's transport. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of London's trolley buses. If you did, there's a like button down below. And you can, if you wish, subscribe for more on London's transport and other such topics. But what do you think? Could London benefit from reintroducing trolley buses, or were they a concept whose time has gone? How about in other British cities? Let me know in the comments section. I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, and here on YouTube, for their generous support. You are the pole to my wire. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.